This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's New Product Rundown features Trumpeters MTLB, ICM's JU88, Tiger Models Abrams, Ravel's X-Wing, and Wingnut Wing's Early Albatross. Welcome to the New Product Rundown. I'm Elizabeth Nash. Me and this kid here, Aaron Skinner, got a bunch of kits for you to look at today. Starting with Trumpeter's 135th scale MTLB. The MTLB is the abbreviation for the Russian name of the vehicle, the Imslagov. Imslagov. The Imgatselvoy Tragash Lugs. I quit! <laughs> which translates as light armored multi-purpose. Fully amphibious, the MTLB has served with the Soviet and Russian armies since the 1960s. Designed to replace artillery tractors, the vehicle has served many a role, including armored personnel carrier, ambulance, and reconnaissance. Thousands were built, and they've served in every major Soviet or, mil or Russian military operation for the last 50 years. Notably, Afghanistan and Chechnya. It's also been used by combatants in Iraq, Ukraine, Georgia, and Nigeria. Such widespread use makes it surprising that so few kits have been built, except for those from SCIF and UM. Trumpeter uh, trumps the competition with modern tooling. Fine features, both recessed and raised, mark the hull parts. Comprehensive interior details set this kit apart. There's a good-looking transaxle with plumbing and control rods for the nose. Separating the front compartment and the troop area is a spiffy-looking engine with the kind of detail you see in a car kit, including hoses and wiring. The driver and commander's cabin features pedals, control sticks, seats, and communication equipment. Fuel tanks and seats line the walls in the back. The instructions aren't explicit, but the hatches can be posed open to reveal all the detail. There's even detail on the ceiling of the troop compartment. The tiny turret has breech detail for the machine gun. Check out the fidelity of small items. The suspension arms, they're pretty tiny, are separate. Good moldings mark the idler and drive sprocket. The road wheels' stamped metal faces look terrific. The inner faces are separate parts. This kit comes with the original narrow tracks as individual links. Two guide horns need to be attached to each link, and there are 107 on each side. Sounds like fun. Clear parts supply the driver's and commander's windshields, periscopes, vision blocks, and light lenses. The kit includes three photo etched brass frets. One provides the parts to build the intricate amphibious propulsion vanes. The other supply tie-downs, latches, and other fixtures. The small decal sheet belies one of the kit's highlights, the variety of finishing options. Eight to be precise. The color information and profiles are by Ammo of Meg Jimenez, but no details are given for the options. Not even nationality. Based on markings, it looks like there are two or three Russian vehicles, a couple from the Mideast, and a cool Ukrainian MTLB in digital camo. Nice looking kit of an important AFE. Nice job, Trumpeter. It's hard to argue with the importance of the subject of our next kit, ICM's 148 scale JU-88A5. Designed as a fast bomber, the twin engine's plane's versatility shone through as it carried out many other roles. Including dive bomber, night fighter, heavy fighter, ground attack, reconnaissance, and even a flying bomb, the Mistel. A flying bomb? Yes. <laughs> More than 15,000 were built. As such, the aircraft is popular among modelers with scores of kits in nine scales. But there hasn't been a new 148 scale JU-88 in more than two decades, so this is a welcome release. The recessed detail on the parts is consistent and very fine. Most of the wings are on a separate sprue, a nod toward other versions perhaps. They connect to an inboard section molded with part of the fuselage. The rest of the fuselage is in halves with a little interior structure on the cockpit walls. Detail crams the crew compartment, including radios, instrument panel with decal dials, seats, controls, pedals, and more. By the time you close the fuselage, almost 50 parts have gone into the space. All of the control surfaces, including flaps, are separate and posable. The elevators are designed to be movable. There's good detail in the gear bays inside the nacelles, including firewalls. Access hatches are provided. Nicely appointed Jumo engines fill the nacelles, and four bombs occupy the wing racks. Beautiful clear parts provide three noses, two canopy rear sections, and a couple of options for the gondola. Sharply printed decals give options for four early war bombers, three in standard Luftwaffe camouflage, the fourth dressed for winter on the Eastern Front. 
This looks like a worthy addition to any collection of Luftwaffe warplanes. Our subjects continue to shrink scale-wise, bringing us to Tiger Model's 172nd scale M1A2 Abrams SEP with Tusk II. That designation is a mouthful, but fitting for this small but dense package of parts. In answer to discovered vulnerabilities of the tank in tight urban environments to RPGs and missiles, the Abrams was fitted with Tusk. Or Tank Urban Survival Kit, which offered protection in lightly defended areas such as the belly and the side, all the while improving the crew's ability to see and engage with threats. The most visible uh, objects of the Tusk are the added armor on the sides and turret, the machine gun mounted on top of the main gun, and the fully protected gunner and commander's hatches. Tiger Model's diminutive Abrams features good moldings, including weld seams and handles. Compromise for scale is seen in the road wheel arms molded to the hull sides. The tracks are Lincoln length with wheels molded on. Large posts anchor the inner road wheels to the upper run, but they'll be all but invisible behind the skirts. The interfaces of the tracks lack detail, but the vents on the rear of the hull look great. The turret looks as good as the hull and includes a one-piece gun with separate muzzle. Small parts like machine guns and smoke launchers look sharp. Runs of the curved armor plates attach to the skirts with blocks molded top and bottom. Gun shields, antennas, and the extra bustle basket finish the tusk upgrade. A small photo etched fret provides mesh for baskets and combat identification panels for the turret. Pre-cut tinted plastic supplies the ballistic glass blocks. The kit includes no decals and the painting instructions show a single option in desert yellow. If you like your modern armor small, check out this kit. Next, squeeze! is Ravel's 148th scale X-Wing. For years, the best Star Wars kits came from Fine Molds, which released detailed, accurate models of the famous ships from the movies. Then the company lost its license, and some of us feared the kits would disappear. But then there was new hope when Ravel acquired them. They're releasing them under the Master Series banner. Finely molded plastic fills the box. Recessed panel lines crisscross the major parts. There's a detailed cockpit, gear bays, and astromech unit. Decals dress up the controls and droid, which can be posed in its bay or next to the model. Structural features grace the outer and inner faces of the wing, which are designed to move S-foils to attack position. All four engines are well molded with features inside the intakes and exhausts. The laser cannons have fine tips and scale fin guards. The canopy is molded closed. The hefty stand can hold the snub fighter in three positions and there's a seated pilot. Decals provide markings for Red 5, Luke's fighter at the Battle of Yavin. They are pre-weathered and look great. This is a great kit and a good size of one of the most iconic ships in the Star Wars universe. Squee! Finally, another Antipodean 132nd scale delight, Wingnut Wings Albatross B2. This two-seat biplane entered service in 1913 and served the German Air Force through World War I. Typical of Wingnut's offerings, the parts feature crisp moldings and recessed panel lines and raised ribs. Inside, both the cockpit and the passenger compartment, there's a ton of detail. Including seats, frames, controls, and instrument panel. Up front is a comprehensive replica of the Daimler Mercedes D1 or D2 engine with magnetos, plumbing, exhaust, and camshafts and rocker boxes. The ailerons are separate. But the rudder and elevators are molded in place. Wingnut includes optional covered and exposed spoke wheels. If you're up for a challenge, try the photo etch spokes. Clear plastic supplies a windscreen for the front position. Two large cartograph printed sheets provide markings for five early B2s from 1915 and 1916. Wood grain decals decorate the fuselage. Wow, another Wingnut Wings winner. <laughs> Look for reviews of the MTLB, JU-88, and Abrams in an upcoming issue of Fine Scale Modeler magazine. And you can see more new products in the April issue on sale now. Thanks for visiting FineScale.com. I'm Elizabeth Nash. And I'm Aaron Skinner. May the route to your workbench be free of obstacles, including attack bomber, ground attack, night fighter, heavy fighter, something reconnaissance, and even a flying bomb, the Mistel. Uh, more than 15,000 were built. <laughs> more than 15,000. <000. laughs>